Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 22. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 2, or the PDF files, or the PowerPoints with a handwritten math, uh, click on the link below the video. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to come back to this Excel workbook. Uh, we're going to talk about adding fractions. And adding fractions, if they are like fractions, that means they really like each other, right? No, that means the denominators are the same. These are easy to add. If you get down here to unlike, that means the denominators are different, then it's a little bit more complicated. We're going to start and look at how to do this stuff by hand. Okay, so our first topic is add and subtract fra fractions that like each other. So here's a fraction here, 2 fifths. And we're going to add. And by the way, these rules, the rules for adding and subtracting uh, fractions are the same. All right, so there's one fraction, and we're going to add 1 fifth. Now, these fractions really like each other. <laughs> the only reason is the denominators are the same. And here's the uh, rule. If they're the same, you simply add the top, the numerator. So this becomes 2 plus 1 divided by 5, right? So as long as these are the same, you just add the top. And that becomes 3 fifths. All right, so that's like fractions. Now let's go and talk about unlike fractions. Oh, actually, let's do a, a subtraction, right? So we'll come down here and 2 fifths minus 1 fifth. And that's going to equal 2 minus 1. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, we checked. These are the same, right? The denominators are the same. So we, we take the two numerators and the operate, operator, either plus or minus, and put it over this, all right? Equals, and then 2 minus 1 is 1 fifth. 1 out of 5. 3 out of 5, all right? So adding and subtracting. Uh, like fractions right there, right? That's the easy that's the easy one. Now let's go and talk about unlike. Oh man, the fractions are like bitter enemies. No, 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 they're not bitter enemies. Uh, let's take this example. This is in our PDF. Um, and the PDFs have, maybe we'll go take a look. They have um, all of the rules and <coughs> terms and stuff like that. I'm gonna start off with five eighths. So 5 over 8, or 5 divided by 8, and you need to add 3 twelfths. Now I want to go take a look at our uh, PDFs before we do this calculation. So there's our PDFs. This same problem is uh, listed right here. And the process is called least common denominator. That's the process we're going to do. And you can come and look at this. I'm going to do this live, but there's the one, two, three steps. Uh, the process is called least common denominator, or lowest common denominator, or least common multiple. LCM, there's an actual function in Excel well, that will calculate the least common multiple, which is the least common denominator for you. All right, now this process, let's go back over here. The way I'm going to show you is different than the book. And the way I'm going to show you reveals the meaning of all of the steps and why we're allowed to do what we do. Now, step one. So step one, we have to list all the prime factors. So list all prime factors. It's hard for me to write here, so you can go over and look at the, the uh, the, over in the PDS, but list all the prime factors. Well, list all the prime factors for what? Denominators. See, we're not allowed to add across the top here unless these are the same. So we have to figure out how to make them the same. All right, and here's how you do it. You put the 8, and in this step, we just list our prime factors. We're going to have to do it for 8 and for 12. All right. So what are the prime factors? Well, again, you might do this over in an Excel. Start with the 2, right? And it turns out that uh, 2 times 4 is 8, but 4 can be broken apart into 2 times 2. So those are all the prime factors. Now 12, 
Again, you could do this over in Excel. We learned a great trick for figuring out uh, your uh, prime factors. Uh, we'll start with 2 because we can divide 12 by 2. That gives us 6. But 6 is made up of what? 2 times 3. All right. So that's uh, we list all the prime factors. Now I'm going to make a little line here just to make it easier. Like this. And then our goal is to calculate what the LCD is. And here's how you do it. Step two is you look through. And how many different prime factors do we have? Well, we have twos and threes. So you look through for each distinct prime factor, right? There's distinct, there's a two, there's a three. That's all there are. You count how many has the most. One, two, three. One, two. OK, so th we have three twos here. So the LCD is going to need three twos. All right, so we're done with twos. There's three of them here. There's two of them here. We pick the biggest one. Now we'll look for all the threes. There's no threes. Zero threes there, one three here. So there's only one three. And that's how you calculate what the LCD is. Two times two times two is eight. So two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Three times eight is 24. All right, so that's step two. Step two, right here. Now, step three, we're actually going to rewrite this down here. But we're going to write it in a certain way. And here's the trick. You look up here and you say, oh, hey, here's the number eight, right? And we have to get this to 24, right? So I look here. Mm, what, are the, what are these prime factors here? What are they missing to get to the LCD? Well, it's missing a three. And I always write the word need. This is going to need a 3. And then I look here, and I look at all of them, and I compare it to this. What are we missing here? Well, we're missing a 2. Okay, That's a very important. Whatever the 8 is missing, and whatever the 12. Now, there could be a few different uh, prime factors here. And in our next example, we'll see that. that there, you can have more than one here. Now, let's come over here, and we're going to talk about the magic of the number 1. 5 eighths. Is 5 eighths this? Well, we get the same number as that if we take 5 eighths and multiply it by the number 1? Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to leave it like that for just a moment. And I'm going to add, OK, so this is 3 twelfths. And am I allowed to multiply that? Yeah, you know, conceptually, you can see that if we did this, it's the same as that. You could even go into a calculator or an Excel formula and uh, do that, right? And calculate it's the same. But in order to get that to 24 and that to 24, we need to rewrite this number 1 in a different way. Well, what's true about the number 1? Anything divided by itself is the number 1. So the type of number 1 I'm going to multiply it by is I'm going to come up here, oh, 8 needs a 3. All right, so that 5 eighths times 3 divided by 3 is going to be exactly equal to this number right here, right? So it would become, you know, uh, 15 uh, 24 fourths, right? We're then going to add, right? And we, we learned how to add, multiply fractions before. But now we're going to add. Well, we're going to list our 3 twelfths. And I'm going to multiply it times 1, because I'm absolutely allowed to do that. Oh, but the type of 1 I'm going to list here is 2. If you run this on in Excel or a calculator, or if you can do it in your head, it's exactly equivalent to this up here. All right, But this is our process. And the reason why I do it this way, different than the textbook, is I want to show you that this whole process involves multiplying by a 1. We just happen to pick the kind of 1 we want that is useful. And how do we know it was 3? Because we listed all the prime factors, figured out the LCD, and figured out that that was missing for the 8, 5 eighths. All right? Now we can simply do our multiplication. We get 5 times 3 is 15 over 24 because 8 times 3 is 24, plus 
3 times 2 is 6. Uh, and 12, 12 times 2, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to have to right click and uh, boop. Now I'm going to have to right click and go back to my uh, color there. All right, and this is 24, right? Now we have these fractions. I mean, what's so magic about this, this whole process, right, is that you took a couple of people that didn't like each other. I mean, fractions that are unlike. They didn't like each other, and now they like each other. Look at that. They have 24, so we can simply add. Well, I'm having trouble with my cursor here. So 15 plus 6 over 24. That's our like fractions rule. 21 over 24. All right, so let's take this uh, and rewrite this down here. We have a 21 and 24. I'm going to list. I want to see if we can reduce this. So I'm going to list the prime factors. 21 is 3 and 7 times 7. And let's see, uh, 24. Well, I know I can divide 24 by 2, right? You know, you, you can do this over in Excel. We learned that great trick for finding prime factors. Uh, so 24 divided by 2 is 12. So Oh, and 12 can be divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And oh, 6 can be divided by 2. And finally, 6 divided by 2 is 3. All right, so now we have, oh, let's see if I can change this uh, color. Boop. Now we go, because there's a 3 in the top and the bottom. And now we're left with a 7 in the top and three twos in the bottom. So this is going to equal equals 7. And 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. That's 2 raised to the third power. So there's our 7 eighths. Now, okay, so this is a this is a lot of steps here, and it's gonna it takes practice. This is only the first time you've seen it, so you got to go uh, practice it on a few homework problems. But this is nice, and you can look if you want to look in the textbook. And this is section 2.2. .2. You know, they show you a slightly different method, but what I like about this, and I know when I learned it, uh, I I wanted to know why why they were doing that, and it's simply because of this magic number one. Anything times one is itself. And then we listed the uh, prime factors from the LCD that this fraction didn't have. Well, boom, and that gave us our ability to solve this problem. All right, now let's go over to Excel. All right, over in Excel, we're on the sheet uh, add one. Here's for adding. Now these fractions like each other. The denominators are the same, so they're they're like fraction so we can simply add well the bottom line is in Excel we can just add here too we're just going to use the sum function here too we have to make sure in advance that we know what the correct um, looking answer is so we can use the right fraction number formatting all right so I'm going to use the sum function here alt equals it's going to add those up enter now it happened to uh, have the right format We've done this in advance. We know that 2 plus 1 is 3, so that's correct. Now let's try our subtraction. Equals 2 fifths minus 1 fifth. Now actually, I'm going to click Escape. I want to show you something. And there's this note right here. I have cell B5 selected. Notice it says general number formatting. That means there is no uh, specialized number formatting applied. But watch what happens when I create a formula with cell references. I click there minus this, so it's 2 fifths minus 1 fifth. They're like fractions, so we're allowed to simply, uh, we know what the answer because 2 minus 1 is 1, the bottom are the same, so it should be 1 fifth. But watch this. You can see it's grayed out. It's still got general, but because these cell references, are, we used them in a formula, it will take the number format and put it in this cell. So when I control enter, it automatically gets a fraction number format. Now. That is only going to cause us problems in situations where, uh, you know, we've calculated the particular type of answer we want, and the number formatting is not correct. In both of these cases, it worked perfectly. 
Now let's try it down here. Now what's our answer? We remember from right there we should get 7 eighths, right? So I'm going to come here, Alt equals, Enter. Oh, I got that one right also. Actually, our next example, um, and we'll go over and do this one by hand and come back here. And when we uh, add these up, we will not get the correct answer, and we'll have to change the number formatting. But just take a note, it says fraction. Even though before we did our formula, that fraction formatting wasn't there. It was general. All right, let's go over back over to uh, and, and look at our next example. I'm going to go look at the PDFs. Okay, so the PDF's the next page here. It's got all the steps, including some important notes here. Oh, there's that lovely little number one we're going to multiply. Everything down here. So those are the PDFs. Let's go and uh, do this by hand. All right, so I'm going to go to the uh, next slide here. Change the pointer. All right, so in our problem, we're going to do, oops, let me grab my pen. We're going to do 5 eighths plus 3 fourths plus 1 half. And uh, we need to figure out what that's equal to. Well, right off the bat, we can't add them because we do not have like denominators. These fractions are called unlike. So no problem. Step one, we're going to list all of our prime factors. Prime factors. I'm gonna, I have an 8, a 4, and a 2. So I'm going to put an 8, a 4, and a 2. Wish I could uh, draw straight. It looks like I'm on the ocean or something. All right. All right. So all the prime factors of 8, well, I know it's divis divisible by 2. That leaves me 4. 4 is made up of two twos. 4, we got two twos. And 2, well, that is 1, right? So let's come down here, our LCD. Step 2 is to find all the distinct or unique prime factors. We only have one. There's two, OK? So amongst all of these, we have to find the time that the prime factor is listed the most times. It is uh, 2 listed 3 times. So the LCD equals 2 times 2 times 2. So in order to do our little calculation later where we figure out the number 1, what does this one need? Nothing, because it's got it. This one needs a single 2. This one needs 2 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, right? All right. So our next step is to rewrite rewrite this right here in a form. And I'm going to do it just like we did before so we understand that there's a number 1 here. 5 eighths times 1 is the same as 5 eighths plus 3 fourths times 1 plus, and we have a 1 half, so 1 half times 1. All right, now here's the trick. This number one has to be a particular type of one. Well, I don't need anything there, so I'm just going to rewrite 5 divided by 8. And why? Because that one's already correct. Plus, and I take my 3 fourths right here, times, and I look up here. Oh, it needs a 2. So the number one I'm going to put is two, divi uh, 2 divided by 2 or 2 over 2. Finally. I need to take this 1 half times 1. So we go 1 half times. The type of 1 I'm going to do is you can put 4 up here. I'm going to be, just in case you have a bunch of them you can't do in your head, write it like this and then do it on the calculator. All right. All right. And so now we've rewritten this. And the meaning of this is the reason we're allowed to, in essence, jump this denominator up to 8. Well, if we're going to do something to denominator, we got to do it to the numerator, too. And that's where that 2 times 2 comes in. So I'm going to rewrite this over here. Well, the 5 eighths remains the same. Plus, and here, 3 times 2 is what? 6. And 4 times 2 is 8. And then over here, we have 1 times 2 times 2, so it's 4. And over here, we have. 2 raised to the third power is 8. So that's 8. 
And now, beautiful. Again, what's so cool about this? You're taking uh, people that don't like each other, and you're making them like each other, right? So we're making the world a better place. So 5 plus 6 plus 4, so 5 plus 6 plus 4, all over 8. Remember, that's like fractions. We're allowed to do that. And so we're left with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, I think that's right, 15 over 8. Now, this is a improper fraction, and um, we could actually probably uh, reduce this. We have to live. Okay, no, we can't because. Yeah, I did that right. This has got a. Th well, let's do it. 3. So 15 is. Um, So 15 is 3 times 7. Those are the prime factors. And this one's got 2 times 2 times 2. All right, so there's nothing we can cancel, all right? So we could leave it as 15 eighths. And when we go over to Excel, we'll do it both ways. But uh, what if we wanted to actually show a mixed number? Well, let me show you two different ways to do it. And put a little arrow. The first way we could say we could ask the question, Division, right? How many eights are in 15? Ugh, one. Right? So we have to put an eight here and subtract. So uh, 15 minus eight is seven. So it's w actually, we'll do, we're not going to do the decimal, we're going to do the remainder because we're going to a, a mixed number. Remainder seven. So what does that mean? Oh, well, we have one. How many eights are in 15? One. And we're going to add to it what? Well, seven remainder out of eight. So it's not quite another whole one, right? If this was 16, the answer would be two. So seven eights, seven parts out of eight is what's left. And. That, of course, is, in essence, the definition of a uh, mixed number. You have a whole number and you add a fraction. So we can write it as 1 and 7 eighths. The other way you could do this, I hope I have enough room here. Now, let's just think about this. Notice here we have like fractions. And we decided that we could then add the numerators, right? So we got this. And when we added them, we got 15. But it, do you think it's possible to go backwards? Well, that's an equal sign, so yeah, you can go backwards. You could break this apart. You could say 1 plus 14 and go backwards. Or you could say 5 plus 6 plus 4, so you could go backwards. And then, in essence, unwind. So this is our final answer. You could unwind it like this, going backwards. So let's try that. 15 over 8. Well, we could write that any way we want. The way I'm going to choose to write it, what's 8 plus 7? Oh, it's 15, right? Well, notice 8, there's something in the, the numerator up here, and we're adding, and it's got a denominator. Well, we could just break it apart because we're allowed to do This is like going backwards, right? So I have two fractions, and I'm adding them. So I'm going to choose to put the 8 there and the 7 there. Well, what's anything divided by itself? Well, it's 1 plus 7 eighths. And of course, that's 1, whoops, 1 and 7 eighths. All right, so uh, we did it this way. We also did it the straight division way also. Now. Um, we want to look at another example. And I'm going to go over to the PDFs. Okay, So here's adding fractions. Oh, there's another example for adding fractions right there. In fact, that's the one I think we have over in, oh no, that's the one we just did. And um, down here, here's adding mixed numbers. Now, with mixed numbers, 
you're adding some whole numbers and some fractions. So these are parts of the number 1, right? 1 half, 1 fourth, 2 thirds. You actually have to add those. You just treat this as a separate problem, right? You add all of these. And you have to do the same LCD, right? And then eventually you get something like this. You add, all right? So if we see here, we, we have a 2, a 4, a 3. So I listed those there. I listed the prime factors. I saw the distinct numbers 2 and 3. I found the one that's listed the most, put them there. 2 is listed twice, so there's two twos. 3 is listed once, so that's our LCD. I listed what we needed, this 2. If you compare it down here, it needs a 2, because there's a 2, it needs a 2 and a 3. This 2, we compare it down here, it only needs a 3. And this 3 needs two twos, right? So then I didn't have to even put this out here. I could have just figured out what this is, but I chose to wrote it like that, write it like that. I do this. This is just the number 1 multiplied by each fraction. I then calculate that and get these numbers here. Multiplication, just straight do the, multiply the numerators and the denominators. Finally, I get this, all expressed as twelfths. Finally, I can come over and I can add. right? So I add 6, 3, and 8 and get 17 over 12. Add these, get 19. Okay, 17 twelfths. Well, that's more than the number 1 because it's an improper fraction. That numerator is bigger than the denominator. So I chose to break it apart. 17 is 12 plus 5. So I list that number 1 plus 5 twelfths. Well, that 1 can be added to the 19, right? So I get 20 and 5 twelfths. All right, um, well, let's go back to our PowerPoint. I'm going to go to the next uh, slide here, right? And um, we're going to do this one. So I'm going to put 7 and 1 half. Maybe a little pen here. And I'm going to put 2 and 1 fourths. Plus 10 and 2 thirds. Right over in the PDFs, I did it all, all together. But I'm just going to deal with the fractions, add those up, and get the total there. Right? All right, so I'm going to come over here. And step one is to list my LCD. Well, I have a, even though I didn't write it nicely, a 2, a 4, and a 3. So um, primes, list all the primes. So 2, 4, and 3. And I do not know how to use this. Right, something like that. All right, so two. Oh, well, that is the two. Uh, four is two times two, and three is three. All right, so we're going to write need up here. This is what we're going to need. LCD. Lowest common denominator, least common denominator, also sometimes uh, called least common multiple. All right, well, we have twos and threes, right? 2 is listed one time here and two times here. So I'm going to take that two times and put it down here. The 3 is only listed one, so I'm going to list it here. And so the LCD is 4 times 3 is 12. So this one needs, OK, so I look at that 2 and I compare it down here. Oh, it needs a 2 and a 3. It's all right if you just put a 6 there. This 2 I compare it to there. Oh, it needs a 3. That 3 I compare it to, to the LCD. Oh, it needs a 2 times 2. All right, so I'm going to come over here and do just the fractions. 1 half. And I'm going to straight, I know it's times 1. So I look up here. Uh, I'm going to just put a 6. So 6 over 6. All right, so that's 1. So I just took this first fraction. Multiply it by 1. Now I'm going to add, because that add symbol means to add all these, the fractions and the whole numbers. 1 fourth. Right, 
oh, it needs a 3. So the type of 1 I'm going to use is a 3 plus, And I'm going to take this 2 thirds. Oh, and it needs a 4. So I'm going to go times 4. And now I can do my straight multiplying. So 1 times 6 is 1 is 6. Uh, 2 times 6 is 12, so it would be 6 twelfths. Right here, 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. See how cool that is? It, because we listed our number 1's in the right way, we're always going to get a 12 in the bottom. So this should be a 3. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. Oh, that is just like magic. So this becomes 8. 14, 17. I think I did that right. 17 twelves. All right, so that is more than one. So you can do it two ways. You can do your division. How many twelves are in 17? Well, oh, there's only one. I put a 12 here. So it looks like 5, right? Remainder 5. So then this becomes, it is, this becomes uh, 1 and 5 parts out of 12. So there's some part left that's less than 1, so 5 twelfths. The other way we could have done that, do a little box right here. Is uh, I don't think I can fit 17 divided by 12 is equal to, well, okay, 12 plus 5 over 12. And we're going to do this backwards. Oh, oh, like frank fraction. So I'll put a 12 here and a 12 here. This is a 12. This is a 5. OK, so I'm running out of room. That's 1. That's 5 twelfths. So either way you want to do it. Maybe I'll go like this. So that should be 1 for that one right there. And uh, 5 twelfths. Now let's come up to our problem right here. I'm going to go like this. Cool. Check this out. This is different than in the PDFs. I'm going to put 1 and 5 twelfths plus, remember, I've I'm, I'm gotten rid of all of these. They're out of there, right? Because all I added all of these. So I'm just going to put it at the top, 1 and 5 twelfths. And then I have these set a 7 plus 2 plus 10. Oh, I get to just put this down here, 5 twelfths, because there aren't any other fractions. 1, that's 8, 9, 10, so 20. All right. Now, I do want to look at this example and uh, this last example up here that we did. So we, when we did this, when we got 1 and 7 eighths, when we did uh, this calculation here, we got 20 and 5 twelfths. So I want to see how to do it in Excel. Jump back over to Excel. And actually, earlier, just a moment ago, uh, uh, when we were on the sheet, I had numbers here, but I deleted them because I want to show you how to add, put them in here. Right? So our goal is to add 5 eighths plus 3 fourths plus 1 half. So as we learned earlier, if it's an input number, do a formula, right? Because if we don't do that, it thinks it's a date. So 5 eighths, and we'll worry about the formatting in just a second, equals 3 divided by 4. Enter equals 1 divided by 2. Now we could have just put 1.5 uh, there, but you know most of the times we don't know what the decimal equivalent for a fraction is. Now I'm going to highlight all these and I'm going to open up my number tab, control 1, uh, format cells on the number tab, and I'm going to go straight down to custom. And these are all single digits in the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to type question mark slash, and you can see the uh, formatting sample appear here as we type. 
question mark. So now, we click OK. And there's our 5, 8, 3 fourths, and 1 half. Now, when we add this, Alt equals, that's the sum function, we, we noted up here that before we put this formula in, you can see it says general number format up here. But because we're using cell references, it, it thinks we want this the number format from the input number. So when I hit Enter, it applies a number format. Now, as you recall, 15 eighths was our answer before we got a mixed number. So we want to change that format. We want to show it as 1 and 7 eighths. So if you uh, Let's see right here, up here, right? So when we did this calculation right here, we got 15 eighths, but we want to then reduce it to 1 and 7 eighths. All right, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to immediately plot, wipe away everything using the general, right? And now I'm just going to start fresh. Control 1, custom, right here, highlight this. And mixed numbers require that pound sign. Shift 3, space. That's not correct yet because it's trying to round. But as soon as we put question mark slash question mark, boom, there's our answer. So again, this is just number formatting. There's the decimal equivalent. This is the number formatting for mixed number. And we wouldn't know that that was correct right there unless we had done it off to the side. All right, now our second problem. Oops. Um, well, that shouldn't be showing up there. Uh, right here, this tw we did the out of this and got 20 and 5 twelfths. All right, so we're going to type these numbers in. Right. Remember, this is a mixed number, so we go equals 7 plus 1 divided by 2. So that is the meaning of a mixed number, but we just put it in formula like that. It'll give us the decimal. Equals 2 plus 1. 1 divided by 4 and equals 10 plus 2 divided by 3. All right now, these are mixed numbers. So we're going to right off the bat do a format similar to this. Control 1 or Format Cells Number tab. Custom. And I'm going to highlight right here. Pound side. So it's if we left it just like that, it would show a number with not enough decimals, right? But we space and then question mark slash question mark and enter. Now, let's go look at our answer and we're going to try and guess. So notice up here we did a number format question mark question mark for all of these. But this one here, it, when we add it over in Excel, it's going to suck the format from there so it'll show it incorrectly. But we know that what? The answer is 5 twelfths. So we're not going to get tricked by formatting. We're going to go in and edit the number formatting, and we know that it's two digits in the denominator. So it'll be question mark divided by question mark, question mark. All right, so over here, when I add Alt equals, Control Enter, I'm going to immediately notice that's not what I want to fix. So I'm going to go up and wipe away all the formatting. Now I simply go, and I know it's 5 twelfths, so Control-1, Custom, and pound sign, space, 5 twelfths, 5. There's a single digit in the numerator, slash, uh, question mark, question mark, and I have my 20 and 5 twelfths. All right, uh, so that's a lot about adding, subtracting, fractions and mixed numbers. I think that's the longest video we've done so far in this class. So that's the end of section 2.2. That's the adding and subtracting of uh, fractions and mixed numbers. So you can go do your homework there. We have one last video where we'll do one word problem. And that, that video will uh, apply to all the chapters. You know, we've already, it's just a word problem that we did back in chapter one, but with a fraction. All right, see you next video.